Hi everybody, <clears throat> Dr. Fisher here, and I am really excited to give you a short walking tour of Pine Mountain Observatory. I'm up here in um, August of 2020 when we have just finished some observing and uh, uh, the day after observing, and so we thought it would give you a little video tour and introduce you to your observatory. Here's the uh, one of our the entrance to the uh, to the place, and you can see we've got some beautiful uh, some beautiful signage here and. Uh, Unfortunately, we got the parking lot all locked up right now. We got a gate across the parking lot. Let me walk in here. You can see this is a designated as visitor parking. So the when we can get this place open back up and put you guys up here, here's where you can go in and pull your cars. By the way, if you remember, this is I'm about 30 miles east of Bend, Oregon, which is an altitude of 6,500 feet. Today we've got a partly cloudy, but nice uh, late summer day. It's about uh, 65 degrees up here with a, a little breeze. When you show up, first thing we want you to do is check out our awesome kiosk with some brand new signage. Here's a, here's a map of the place that we had done. We sort of think it's kind of cool. Looks a little bit like Animal Crossing, which I like. And um, yeah, so there you go. We're gonna walk and show you each of these uh, buildings here before it's all over. Nice little welcome sign. And over here on the other side, we've got uh, just some uh, a fact and uh, some recommendations. What do we what do we want you to do, and how do we think that you can best enjoy a visit to Pine Mountain? We uh, turn around again, a little sweep, and I will introduce you to the lovely Pine Mountain Observatory Welcome Center. It's not a gift shop. If you remember, we have um, uh, this is a place where we welcome our public visitors. And inside there we have a little guest book where folks can uh, sign in. And by the way, during the uh, public season, when we have the public nights running, we do request a $5 donation per person to come in and enjoy the show. And um, like I said, shh, there also are uh, stickers and what, you know what? Let's just, um, let's walk in. Let, you know what? Look, I'm feeling bold here right now. I'm going to set my coffee down, get the old keys out. And, uh... oh, guys, first time I've been in the in the Welcome Center all season. And so, oh, here we go. Take a peek, you'll notice that we have some lovely t-shirts here. And with our time-honored Pine Mountain Observatory uh, logo, and just to tease y'all a little bit, yes, the logos glow in the dark. Um, you'll notice we have a, a few little doodads here. Oh, there's our welcome sign, haven't seen that. And, um, you know, a few little knickknacks, some trinkets. By the way, if you're crafty, we're always interested in uh, in folks uh, getting involved with some crafting up here for us. Here are some gifts we've received from from visitors in the past. We got a little Curiosity rover. We got a beautiful wooden star chart and a picture of a bald eagle that a visitor took not too far from from Pine Mountain here, as a matter of fact. So I'd say the Welcome Center is in pretty good shape. Hadn't been hasn't been used a lot this season, but nonetheless. Happy to show it to you. Let's just go ahead and turn these off and walk back outside. So look, here we are back outside. Let me walk across here and we'll uh, show you the, what we call La Residencia. That's a, it's also, this is the five room dormitory that is uh, just waiting, just waiting for the day that we can uh, get, get y'all back up here and visit. And we call this La Residencia because that's named after uh, the dormitory at a telescope down in Chile called the uh, Very Large Telescope. And that's kind of world renowned for having the best, observe, the best, uh, uh, the best dormitory at any observatory. So we just uh, we blatantly stole their name. I'll tell you what, we may catch that on the way back. It turns out those doors are locked up real good. As we turn the corner here, you're starting to see some of the action. Here's the, uh, the telescopes. You notice it's uh, there's no lights. We've uh, it's quite dark by on purpose, of course. We want it nice and dark up here. Here's one of the uh, one of the telescopes at Pine Mountain. You notice we've got old signage and new signage. By the way, these new signs were designed by by UO students, UO undergrads, and this is called the 15-inch Fecker. And let me go in a. We'll take you in the Fecker here in a minute. Well, look, here we go. We're gonna take you around the telescope first. We're um, something kind of cool here in this particular dome. A lot of the observers who used this telescope have uh, signed their names on the walls. We, always, we thought that was a wonderful uh, 
um, sort of thing to do. And we, we've kept it up. And you'll notice here we've got a, a little from 2018 and from 2019. These are the most recent names on the walls just to show you that uh, the Fecker, she's quite active. They have done, uh, by the way, you'll notice uh, Fecker's been around a while. Some of these, uh, some of these uh, things are from the 70s, as a matter of fact. So here's the telescope itself. If you remember we talked, there's three parts of a telescope. Here's the pier. Here's the pier that the telescope sits on. And look at this beautiful, beautiful instrument that, that we have here. This is again is the 15 inch Fecker. There's a 15, it's a mirror that's 15 inches in diameter. It's just inside the back end of the telescope here. Um, we are very, very proud of this instrument and this telescope. It was built, as far as we know, this telescope was built um, sometime between 1952 and 1955. And it was installed here in Pine Mountain at about, no, I think it was uh, 1968, the beginning of, actually it was 67. This was here first in the temporary dome. And um, this telescope was recently re- uh, Actually, it was brought back from the dead. As a matter of fact, it was completely restored by Alton Lucan, the head of operations of uh, Pine Mountain. And uh, we're going to uh, we're going to we're going to hear the story of the Fecker. It's a it's a wonderful story. Um, but this is a monster telescope. If you, it's a little hard to see. You can see here's my hand on it to give you a sense of scale. It's maybe uh, oh, it's probably eight or nine feet long, and it weighs about all together. There's about oh, not quite a thousand pounds worth of stuff up here. Here's the telescope itself. You know, these are some counterweights that keep the telescope balanced while we're using it. There's, uh, uh, of course, the ceiling. And there's the dome. There's the slit of the dome that opens up. And one thing that's interesting about, uh, about this telescope is everything is manual. You uh, want to move the dome, you pull in this chain and you move it. You want to open the dome, you hook it with this hook, and you got to manually crank the dome open. So this is the oldest and uh, most manual of the telescopes up here at Pine Mountain. But gosh, we really love this telescope. As a matter of fact, boo, if you've made me pick, damn, is this my favorite telescope? It's my first or second favorite telescope up here. This is a beautiful machine. And by the way, it gives beautiful views. We can actually put an eyepiece on this telescope. This telescope is primarily used for eyeball observing, and it gives wonderful, absolutely beautiful um, views. I sort of think it's a little bit like, uh, it's kind of like listening to an old record, an old LP instead of a CD. There's just something about the old technology that makes this um, give you just a wonderful, beautiful image. We, uh, we, we also affectionately call this telescope the, the Grand Old Dom of the Mountain, the Grand Old Lady of the Mountain, because uh, she's elegant and beautiful and, um, and is a wonderful instrument. So, Fecker, we'll talk to you later. Bye. <laughs>
robotic telescope, Darth Vader's telescope, the golf ball, the stormtrooper, roboscope, also known as the Robins. And then inside here is the uh, that robotic telescope that we showed you pictures of in class. As you can see, this uh, it's a little tough to see, but the size of this dome, that dome's about six feet tall. So from the cement pad up to the top is about six feet. Back here, looking back at the 32, you can see we've got a SUSENET satellite internet link. We've got a external camera and uh, the dome of the 32 itself. Folks, here's the uh, view from the front door of the 32 inch dome and we got her all opened up. We're gonna walk inside here. Here we are inside the 32. The, uh, there's the 32 inch telescope right there. It's called a fork mount. So it looks a little bit like a tuning fork. Like I said, we, uh, we, love, the, we love the 32. Let me give it a little, little pat. But the, uh, unfortunately, the 32 is not functional right now. The, uh, the mirror is inside there, right there. It's 32 inches across. But the problem is, is in the mount. There's a motor, as you can imagine, the motor that drives the telescope, and that motor is dead. And we have no way of fixing that motor. So right now, the telescope is uh, sitting there idle. Um, I'm not sure what's gonna happen with that old beast. Someday we're gonna do something good with it. You see, we got a whole, uh, we got a little fleet sitting over here too. So some overflow telescopes that we have. We got a beautiful pair of binoculars. And by the way, these binoculars are mounted on a, on a mount. And you can see that you can pretty, you can move these binoculars back and forth. And that is a wonderful alternative to a telescope is a pair of binoculars. <laughs> and real quick, if you remember seeing in class, the, um, this was the original Blue Bomber right here. Hey, Blue Bomber. That was the original telescope that we used inside the Robbins Dome, but it has since uh, been retired and is sitting there uh, putting out to pasture, so to speak. Look, it's not the night of the, we got telescopes all over the damn place. We've got all sorts of stuff. And in here, inside this room right here is the control room of the Robbins. So let's go open up the door. It's, uh, Turn the lights on. There we go. And so here's where the magic happens, so to speak. This is uh, the control room of the Robins. You see, we've got a little uh, laptop here. It's just it's a super high-end Windows uh, laptop. And then we have uh, the control computer. And again, this is a PC that's uh, running Windows. This is just uh, it's just a super duper PC. As a matter of fact. Uh, if you'll notice, we've got this really nice uh, keyboard that's all lit up and mouse. And uh, I got to tell you a quick sidebar: when um, when we ordered that keyboard and mouse, it was the name of it was called the uh, you know Corsair Gaming Keyboard X5000 or something. And we bought it, and I got in trouble by UO. The UO financial people came back and were like, "What the hell are you doing buying gaming?" Uh, computers and gaming systems with your grant money you can't do that so we had to literally take a picture of the of the telescope or excuse me of the computer with the keyboard and send it off to UO and say look it's not a gaming system we're using it in the low light conditions and so we run it often with the lights off and we needed the red lights to see the key so it's okay in the end but you'll notice a little bit like the uh, the the uh, computers at, at Gemini four uh, four screens and um, you know, just a normal, uh, complicated, but uh, no, a very typical PC that we use to operate the telescope. So this is where we sit and observe all night uh, when we're using the PC. And if we have a little desk set up here, you can come out here and uh, and sit and do some data analysis anyways. So look, I'm going to, uh, I'm actually going to do some work in here. I'm going to set up and, and back up all the data and, and do some quick calibrations of all the data that we obtained over the last three nights. So hang tight and we'll come back with another chapter of Welcome to Pine Mountain with Dr. Fisher. Bye.